Hello, Tech Newbies. My name is Don and welcome to my new channel. This is the first in a series of videos that's all about NAS. And today, we are building a budget NAS. So let's go. Tech Newbies Before we go to the parts list and the actual build, let us first address the elephant in the room. What is a NAS? NAS is short for Network Attached Storage. As the name implies, it is a storage device connected to a network that allows storage and retrieval of data from a central location for authorized network users and varied clients. NAS devices are flexible and scale out, meaning that as you need additional storage, you can add to what you have. NAS is like having a private cloud in your home. Why do you need a NAS? With a NAS, you can have as much storage as you need, multiple simultaneous access to files, continuous data accessibility even without internet, and lastly, you can stream your media around your home. Basically, a NAS is like a USB device that can be accessed by everyone within the network, and it's easy to expand as you need more storage. Who can benefit from a NAS? digital artists, content creators, bloggers, and home theater enthusiasts, to name a few. There are commercially available NAS, QNAP, D-Link, and Synology, to name a few. But why build a NAS? It is a lot cheaper. Compared to the ones mentioned, you can build your own NAS for a fraction of a cost. You can even turn your old PC into a NAS. Compatibility with newer, larger capacity drives. Once the commercial NAS reaches its end of life, most manufacturers stop updating their firmwares to support newer, larger capacity hard drives. I personally own a D-Link DNS323 2-bay NAS. At that time, it supports up to 1TB hard disk drive. After around a year, the new 2TB hard disks were released. D-Link released a firmware to support this. But that was the last. Hence, you are now stuck with buying drives that are 2 terabytes because it is the largest capacity your NAS can support. With a DIY NAS, you can be sure that larger drives will be supported as they come, since the base OS used for NAS softwares are regularly updated. Better flexibility. You can do a lot with a NAS, not just a storage device. A built-in NAS is just a computer which you can upgrade depending on what you need. You can use your NAS as a home media server and add a graphics card for flex encoding. Easier storage expansion. If you buy a commercial NAS, say a 2-bay NAS, once you have filled those two hard disk drives, adding another one is almost impossible. Although some commercial NAS can be upgraded to accommodate additional hard drives, these upgrade options usually cost as much as the main unit you bought. With a DIY NAS, once the SATA ports in your NAS are all used, all you need is to buy either an M2 to SATA adapter, PCIe to SATA adapter, or a SAS controller, and you can add more hard drives for a very minimal cost. With that out of the way, let's go to the parts list. The parts that I've chosen were based on what my needs are and what my budget can get me. And to clarify, this video was not sponsored by any manufacturer or brands. All of the parts that I'll be using were purchased with my own money. Let's go over the parts list. At first, I was planning on building this system around the Intel i3-9100 CPU and 32 gigs of RAM. But I happened to come across this bundle of Chinese motherboard an Intel Xeon E52620 and 4x4 gigs ECC RAM for less than $105. Did some research on these Chinese motherboards and was surprised that these are quite popular. There's even some Russian forums for these motherboards. As this was a budget NAS, I bit the bullet and opted for the bundle instead. Considering that this is a server build, the 6-core 12-thread Xeon CPU and the ability to run ECC RAM was a pretty attractive deal. For the storage, I'll be using Western Digital Reds 4x4TB hard disk drives. 
This will be configured to a 1 parity 3 drive pool for a total of 12 gig storage. I'll be installing an ADATA XPG SX6000 Lite 128GB PCIe NVMe. This will serve as my cache drive when I run Plex to help speed up the loading times of the thumbnails. Android will be installed on the SanDisk CruiserFit 16GB USB flash drive. Since this will be connected to the motherboard's rear USB port, I've chosen the smallest form factor that I can find. This is the LSI 9207-8i SAS HBA controller. With this card, you can connect up to 8 additional hard disk drives. This is actually a future upgrade path when I need to add more hard disks. But since I found one online, I might as well get it now. This is the mini SAS 36P SFF8087 to port SATA cable. This allows you to connect 4 SATA hard disks to your LSI 9207-8i. I'll be using one cable for this build. This is quite cleaner looking as opposed to running 4 SATA cables to your motherboard. I've already purchased two of these. The other one will be used in the future as I expand my hard disk pool. For the GPU, I'll be installing the NVIDIA 9500 GT which I bought secondhand online. I opted for an old card since I'll be running this server headless and only need this card to install the Android OS. However, I might upgrade this to a newer GTX card if GPU encoding is needed to improve Plex performance based on my needs. I'll be swapping the free front intake with two Corsair ML140 fans as my front intake. We'll then relocate that fan as a top exhaust instead. Since my motherboard only has two PWM chassis fan headers, I'll be using two Deepcool FH04 PWM fan hubs to regulate my fans. For the power supply, I'll be using the Silverstone ST-60F-ES230. This is a 600 watt PSU that will provide enough power for this system. For the case, I'm going old school as I was lucky enough to find a new old stock of Fractal Design Arc MIDI R2 online. This case has lots of provisions for fan for air cooling. This includes 3 by 140 mm fans, one front intake, one rear exhaust, and one top exhaust. More importantly, it can accommodate 8 3.5 inch hard disk drives and has two 5.25 inch drive base. That's it for the parts. I'll post the links on the description on where I bought these parts. Don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. You can also click on the bell to be notified of new uploads. Your support is very much appreciated. Now we're ready for the actual build.
Now that the build is complete, what's next? First, I'll be installing Windows 10 to run some tests. You can forego this, but I want to ensure that my build is stable before I install anything with finality. After that, I'll be installing and configuring Unrain. Join me again next time as we explore more about NAS. Keep safe and thank you for watching. Peace.